Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click. I created this video as a companion to the shorter February 2020 What's New Summary video. Here, I go into a bit more detail on some of the new features and capabilities in the February 2020 Click products release. It's about 20 minutes or so. We have a demonstration agenda here covering the topics that I'd like to show you. First one being augmented analytics covering natural language analytics now being available on Windows Enterprise Server, as well as insight generation supporting a radar chart. So let's move over to analysis. And you can see directly my Insight Advisor screen is a little bit different now, where I have the ability to ask a question using natural language to produce results. Now understand, if you're upgrading an existing ClickSense installation with February 2020, there are manual steps that are needed to enable this feature. If you're installing this brand new, this will be immediately available out of the box. Please refer to the Click Support Knowledge Base articles to learn more. Okay, so just to keep things simple, I'm going to say show amount by channel and brand. Press enter and you can see that the Cognitive Engine automatically generates my insights, and you can see one of them being a radar chart. Now understand there are certain criteria that must match in order for radar charts to be generated, such as having two dimensions with 12 or fewer values and an included measure. Basically, there is a calculation for a distinct ratio between the values on the first dimension must be below a certain threshold in order for it to appear. Okay, so that is showing natural language analytics and the radar chart being supported by the Insight Advisor all on a Windows installation. Okay, so let's go back to our agenda. And now under the topic visualizations and dashboards, there'll be a number of items that we can cover. Trend lines, table trend indicators, advanced calculations under our new modifiers selection, uh, custom map symbols or the use of images within maps, enhancements to the funnel chart and other chart styling. And then underneath dashboards and apps, styling for action buttons, custom tooltips on charts, the ability to toggle the map layer selection, as well as making conditions for a background layer to show within a map, the ability to also duplicate measures and dimensions. And then we also have a new function available for our cloud-based editions of ClickSense that allow you to perform geocoding operations, basically taking a, a street address, if you will, and being able to produce uh, latitude and longitude for that. Okay, so let's go to analysis. And let's use our natural language analytics again. We'll say, show me amount for month for... 2014. Okay, so our Cognitive Engine processes, it creates a line chart for the year 2014. We'll add that to our sheet, go into edit mode, resize, and then underneath the data tab, you'll see you'll have your dimensions and measures. So within the measure tab, you'll see there's a new button to add a trend line. And I know this has been a requested feature, and uh, many of you should be very happy about this. So here we can click Add Trend Line, and then you can choose the type of trend line. So basically, any content creator, you can take advantage of these statistical capabilities within the Associative Engine uh, for both bar and line charts. And the options include average, uh, what else is here? Uh, linear, uh, logarithmic, exponential, power, polynomial, uh, to different degrees, basically calculated on the engine, so not on the client side. So if I choose linear, second degree, exponential, logarithmic, power, etc. You could also choose the line style and you could choose the line color. Okay, the next one I'm going to show you is table indicators. And I'm just going to take the existing chart and I'm just going to paste it. And then we're going to grab a table object, drop it on the chart, and then just convert it to a table. And uh, let's make this a little bit more cleaner. Call that amount. 
and give it some formatting. Now, basically, I would like to create a range of values. For example, if the value is from 0 and 100, make it red. If it's from 100 to 300, make it yellow. If it's from 300 to 500, make it green, etc. Stuff like that. So you'll notice within this column, we now have a representation item and we can represent it as an indicator. And you can add some limits. So I'm just quickly going to add three different limits. Just going to adjust them so they're pretty equi distance. And then you can see it can change the color. So let's just say it'll be red. And we'll just use um, some stop lighting right now, just a circle, but you can change the particular icon as well. And this one will be yellow. And this one will be green. Now you could also set a gradient and you could also hide the values or just show the values with the appropriate color if you wanted to do that as well. And as I make adjustments, you can see that this is completely dynamic, changing the stop lighting effect. Okay, so that is table indicators. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you modifiers. Basically, modifiers are an easy way to add another calculation level to the expression utilizing the simple drop down box and some additional adjustments. So, to represent the modifier, what I'm going to do here is we're just going to convert this back to a line chart. And then you'll notice within the measures area, there is a link that expands the modifier menu. Now, in the last new release, we added accumulation, which basically allows you to uh, accumulate the totals uh, over that time period. And here it was custom, which was only uh, after, let's say, six months, or you can do the full 12 months, for example. Now we have also added moving average. And you can change the range for the moving average, as well as difference. And then basically an expression is generated under the covers that you can inspect and uh, reuse if necessary. Okay, so another highly requested feature are custom map symbols. And I just so happen to have a map created here. And here you can see we have two layers, an area layer showing the states, and the symbols are circles showing cities for the point layer. So what I'm going to go here is select my map, go to my layers. I'm going to select my point layer for the customer city. And you can see under size and shape, we have the ability to adjust the size, but we also have the ability to select the shape. You'll see there's a new item here for image. So at this point here, I can actually browse some particular media. Here I have a map marker which in this case it already exists. So we can select the in-app object and then choose the map marker and click insert. And then you can see those map markers are now available and I could adjust. You could also change the rotation. Okay, so that is custom map markers. Okay, so the next item I want to show you, it's really underneath the section mark dashboards and apps, um, the map layer selection toggle and background layer conditions. So let's just do those while we're within the map. So I'm going to go back to my analysis and select my chart object. Now you can see if we go into analysis mode, if I zoom in, I have the ability of actually selecting a state or I could select the individual points. Well, maybe I want to disable selections on some of these elements. So what you can do is select your layer. In this case, maybe I want to just clear my selections. So maybe I want to disable any of the uh, state selections. So we'll go to the state layer and you can see there's an option for disable selections. So now in analysis mode, selecting a state does not do anything, but I can still select my individual cities either by individually clicking them or by drawing a lasso around them, etc. 
Then the other thing is the ability to conditionally show a layer based off of certain criteria. Now I have a simple list box here that just has some values for the brand. And in this instance here, we can go to the state area layer and you can see that there's this calculation condition. I said if brand is equal to Q dash T mommy, then zero or one, basically the show or hide. So if it's equal to QT mommy, it hides the area. If not, it shows. Okay, so the ability to control layer visibility through conditions. Okay, so the next one I'd like to show you is our new action button. So in this particular case here, we improved upon the action button that was available within custom objects and that was available under the click dashboard bundle. So this button here had a variety of uh, navigation and actions that you can configure, but you could not really style it. In this release, we actually have our new button object and you have a number of font styling as well as background styling and uh, action and navigations that you can add to this. Now, instead of going through this live, I actually have uh, one pre-configured that we can navigate to. And basically here you can perform selection manipulation, uh, set bookmarks, set variables, navigate to sheet stories and websites, and perform a number of different styling options for background color and image, label colors and fonts. Okay, just to give you a quick example of switching a variable here, we have a, a switch that shows that the uh, US dollar is selected. Now I'm just going to select the euro and you can see above the top on the right, it pretty much toggles the selection. And here's an example of a quick toggle, I'm switching between EMEA and APAC values, or this one is sort of an enable, uh, disable option. Okay, so that is now our native action button with advanced styling. Okay, so uh, another quick example here, we can now add custom uh, tooltips to our chart objects. So for example, here in analysis mode, if I just hover over a dimension, you can see sales for Natalie Cooper. If I go into edit mode, you can see there's a new item in the accordion panel for tooltip showing you basic, or you can basically add additional measures. So if I also wanted to show gross margin, as well as let's say unit sales, percentage change, I added those measures to the custom tooltip. And now when I hover over that, I can see those additional metrics. And this is available for bar, combo, map, pi, scatter, and tree map charts. Okay, and one other quick time saver, when you're in your particular measures area or dimensions area underneath data, uh, you can right click and select duplicate and then basically make a change to that particular expression. Uh, basically just allows you to add additional measures of dimensions very quickly for you to modify. Okay, so to wrap up this section on visualizations and dashboards, I'm just going to show a couple of prepared application sheets that uh, will cover uh, various chart styling that we have. So let me just navigate to that. So in this particular instance here, you can see that we have uh, improved line charts uh, with a number of new styling options, including thickness, uh, style, curves, uh, vertical presentation. Uh, lines can be individually styled per measure or for the whole chart. Now we also added some additional pivot styling, which includes header and font size and color, uh, cell font size and color, text alignment, and color of dimensional values. Uh, these advancements improve readability and give users expanded customization options. And then finally, there is a new theme setting which allows content creators to set the font family for the text in the ClickSense charts. Uh, another feature that's been requested by many customers. Uh, please note that uh, we are experimenting with this release uh, before we take additional measures to improve the area. At this time, as you see here, it is a theme setting. So there's additional uh, CSS code that goes into the particular block when setting up a theme. Okay, and there's one more additional option for geocoding operations. There's a new function called geo operations. 
Basically, it translates street addresses to coordinates and vice versa. Now, this has always been available as part of the ClickGeo Analytics connector uh, for Windows on ClickSense Enterprise, but now we've added this capability to our cloud-based editions of ClickSense, but it doesn't work through the ClickGeo Analytics connector. It actually works through a, a Geo Operations function. And here's a little animated GIF that basically just shows you uh, a lookup of a particular location and the address and the translations of the coordinates. Okay, so I'd like to keep this demonstration section to about 20 minutes. So for the last parts of the demos, I'm just going to cover dynamic views and QVD catalog browsing. For the rest of the new features, I will suggest you review our release notes and stay tuned to the Click Community blogs and our YouTube channels to see additional videos on these topics. So I have already prepared detailed videos on dynamic views and QVD catalog browsing. So for the next five minutes, I will share some video excerpts demonstrating these concepts. Dynamic Views allows ClickSense apps to be configured at the chart level, where you can define how often a specific chart or charts are refreshed. Initially, charts can be refreshed on an on-demand basis. A subsequent release will offer the ability to refresh at a regular scheduled interval. Let's take a look and see how it works. Dynamic Views uses the same exact detailed app or app template that can be used by on-demand app generation. And you'll notice in our asset panel here, we have a new button for our dynamic views. By selecting that, we can now create a new dynamic view. So we'll give it a name, call it dynamic view one. And you can see from the template app, it will show you all of the apps that you have access to. If you set up a detailed app for on-demand app generation, for example, you can use that as well. And any master visualizations that are in there will then be pulled in. Let's also set up a row limit expression, and we'll do this for the aggregation for the fares measure, and we'll set it to 20,000. So by clicking create, we have now created this new dynamic view, and it's pulled in all of the master visualizations from that app template. So now all we need to do is just drag them and drop them on the canvas. So let's say I'm interested in our fares number as well as uh, maybe some additional detail in the form of a table and then our map. Okay, and these are the same exact objects that were available in the on-demand app generated uh, template when we went through that example in the beginning of the presentation. So at this point we can go into analysis mode and you can see that we have a little notification here explaining that the current selections exceed the constraints. So by selecting this, I can view the constraints. You can see our current row limit and then what the constraints have been set to. And you can see if there's any selections applied. And as I also mentioned, this is an on-demand refresh, so you'll have to initiate it. Subsequent releases will allow you to have this scheduled. So let's reduce our answer set to, let's say, just JFK rate code and payment type dispute. And now we can refresh our dynamic views because we have automatically set those constraints or filters. If we go into the history within Snowflake console, and you can see that this has refreshed, and you can see where rate code is two and payment type is dis or DIS for dispute. So this is an actual query that's being run on the Snowflake data warehouse. And this console is showing that happening in real time and the duration. Now, if we go back, we can see that it has refreshed and now the data is displayed in the form of what we call the dynamic view. Now, obviously I don't have a way of updating the individual data warehouse to simulate a transaction, but you saw the real-time query being displayed directly in the console. And now this particular data in here, I could perform a, a, you know, additional selections. It's basically now part of the selection interface for these individual dynamic views. And now for the last part of the demonstration, I will show you QVD catalog browsing. This is a feature that Click Data Catalyst for QVDs users can benefit from as it allows ClickSense users 
the ability to easily select QVD data that has been provisioned into the Click Data Catalyst catalog and select it just like any other data source. Here's a brief video snip of that process. Oh, and one more thing. This particular feature just became available as I was about to publish this video. For those of you who have Click Data Catalyst, you can also access the QVD catalog utilizing this new feature named QVD Catalog Browsing directly from your data sources within your ClickSense apps. So the way that's achieved is by adding data from files and other sources. You will notice on the left in the menu under Data Content, there is an option for QVD Catalog. Simply selecting that connects you to that catalog, similar to what I showed you earlier in this video. So at this point, if you remember, we were performing some reporting on PVS Ledger. So here I'm just going to search for PVS. And you can see that same QVD cataloged data source that was available in Click Data Catalyst for QVDs is now available for me to select as a data source and bring it directly into ClickSense by itself or to be associated with other data sources. Well, that's it for this video. If you want a deeper dive on these highlights and more with each release, be sure to sign up and subscribe for our Click Insider webinar series, with the next one scheduled on February 26th. If you want to be notified when more videos such as this are posted and are viewing from YouTube, click the bell icon below. We want to hear from you, so tell me in the comments what you think. Don't forget to check out these other great resources to learn more about Click and ClickSense. And please remember to join the conversation with myself and others in the Click community. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.